How strange it is to be in church, wearing masks, praising and worshipping God as we celebrate Christmas. The mystery of God with us, Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, the babe of Bethlehem. And what's the thing that's most strange of all? I think it's probably that these masks also tell us that we are not allowed to sing together in church. And at Christmas, singing the Christmas carols is one of the most important and obvious expressions of our Christmas celebration. The mask says so much to us about the need for protection. Christmas is about the moment when God comes unprotected among us, taking flesh, living with all the vulnerability that is characteristic of being human. Being unprotected from fear, hunger, cold, the danger of political strife, conflict and poverty. These are the things which God takes to God's self as Mary brings forth the word of God, made flesh, Jesus Christ, her child, our Saviour. Yes, singing about all of this is one of the ways in which we give an expression to this mystery, this beautiful mystery in which the God who comes to live our life in all its fullness and all its unprotected danger and sadness, this God also reveals for us the patterns of hope patterns of triumph over death, the patterns which say to us that love will consume hatred, fear and anger and will rework everything that we have damaged into the new perfection of the kingdom of heaven. So what about singing? I think one of the business, one of the things of not being allowed to sing this Christmas which might just be a benefit to us, is that it does mean that we shall need to listen more carefully. You may have in your church a choir which is able to be socially distanced and to sing some of the carols and other music for us. Certainly we are massively fortunate in the cathedral to have a spectacularly good choir who has, through recording and all the uh, modern technology available to us, enabled us still to hear the familiar strains of Christmas carols and also to be challenged by some less familiar music and words. What does it mean not to be able to sing but to listen? I hope that this Christmas we might develop that skill of listening attentively Listening to the words of Scripture first, with great care. Listening to the story so familiar to us, but looking for things which we might have overlooked previously. And then also for listening to the words of our carols and Christmas hymns. What is it that they are inviting us to celebrate and to take to heart? Going back to the words of Scripture, I'm reminded that there is something which sounds like song, something which is mysterious, beautiful and enchanting that the shepherds hear. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those he favours. Peace on earth. This message comes to shepherds. Strange people living rough on the edge of the city and town. People whose lifestyle is hard and 
who are familiar with uh, fear and danger. These tough people, they remind me a bit of the equivalent in our modern day of uh, people who work in the fishing industry, whose life out on the seas uh, confronts all the uh, turmoil of weather conditions, the danger uh, of unforeseen uh, events happening, the close-knit nature of working in these uh, challenging conditions. These tough guys, the shepherds, are enchanted by this song, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. And it draws them to search for the origin of this message, the cause of it being so enchanting and given to them, a baby. They, like all of us, are also enraptured by this sight of new life. Burly guys bursting in on a moment of intimacy in the stable. And there is the mother and the child in a makeshift arrangement laid in the manger. And what do the scriptures go on to tell us? They tell us that the shepherds returned to where they lived and worked, praising and glorifying God for all that they had heard and seen. All that they had heard and seen. One of the themes that emerges from the carols that we sing at Christmas is the extent to which God, who comes unprotected among us, comes not into a place of comfort, of privilege, or of political power and influence. He comes to, as the carol puts it, the poor and mean and lowly. Yes, he is at the margins of our life and society. He is there where the sharpest experience of poverty is to be felt. The beauty of music, of the arts, of drama, of the visual arts, of the architecture which seeks to express something of the glory of God. These are not indulgent extras. These are all, in their way, statements of protest, challenge, and provocation. They are, if you like, similar to the work of Banksy, whose public street art so often challenges us to think about violence and its victims, to think about discrimination against the elderly, the very young, the stranger in our midst, to think about the nature of our relationships one with another and how we trash them thoughtlessly and repeatedly. Yes, at the heart of this enchantment of music, of art, of beauty, is the radical and persistent call to justice, to truth, and to the lifting up of the poor, to set them in the company of princes, to feed them with good things, as Mary sings in her song, The Magnificat, and to be reminded that this is what God has promised for the flourishing of the human race, that those who were excluded find a place, that generosity, joy, and the sharing of the earth's resources, that is the heart of the song of Christmas. As we come through this Christmas, the pandemic that has cast a shadow 
over our lives and celebrations. As we look forward to 2021, let us listen again with great care to the song of the angels and to its echo in our Christmas carols, to its echo from the words of scripture which are a source of its inspiration. Let us, as we look to a new year, the future that unfolds before us, let us live with joyful hearts that God has shared our life in every aspect of our existence and that from our sorrows, from our failures, he will raise up hope and joy. And to those who are at the margins of our society, he invites us to open the door, to welcome them in to the life of his kingdom, of his church, and to ensure that the society that we shape for the future is one where peace, where hope, where dignity will flourish. May God bless our Christmas celebrations, and in the year to come, may they be seen to shape the future of our society.